Hi, it's Vicky here with a mixed media canvas today. I will be using this Distress Paper Mosaic Kit by Tim Holtz that comes with three different products. I'm going to open up the kit so you can see what's inside. So you get uh, two little jars. In one there is grout and in another there is glue. In the first one, the grout is the product that you apply first on your uh, surface that gives a nice texture and this is actually glue to stick down all your paper pieces. You can either use uh, this or your matte medium. I think they are pretty much the same thing. In the kit there is also this glaze that works like um, it has a nice fine tip on top and uh, it works like um, glossy accents. I have the feeling that glaze is uh, kind of more liquid than glossy accents which makes it more easy to apply over your little tiles. You will see later on what I mean. I will be using on th uh, this canvas which is a square canvas, it's about 8 by 8 inches and uh, to start I am going to apply the grout. To apply the grout I will be using my spatula and I am making sure that I apply a nice thin coat and it doesn't have to be super smooth although I am trying to make a nice even layer. Now grout is actually going to give you a nice texture that is going to look like cement and the finished texture is as if it's uh, from a real uh, mosaic. Now, uh, when I am working, I usually have my cat uh, all around, so you can see what I am uh, going through. He just uh, decided that uh, grout was uh, too interesting to taste. And I am going to zoom out so you can see how I am working usually. He's all over and around me, so I always need to make sure that I don't have uh, cat hair on my projects. Anyway, I am applying my grout on the sides as well, so I have a nice and finished project when everything is done. And I hope you can see the texture here, it's still wet, and I did left it aside to dry for about an hour. So here it is now, nice and dry, and I'm going to work on my papers. I have those four different pattern papers, and I'm going to cut out uh, with this Sizzix uh, die some cups. I am going to place them on my canvas and decide where everything is going to go and just because I want to have gaps between them, just like uh, the example here, I am going to cut them out making sure that I leave nice white spaces between all those pieces. So I am marking with my pencil and I am going to cut out all the excess. I'm going to do that for all the pieces as I stack them one on top of the other, making sure that I have a nice white gap. Once I'm happy with how everything comes together, I am taking a photo so I don't uh, forget their placement. And I'm going to work a little bit on those uh, gaps. Now, of course, you can uh, go with um, all those uh, paper pieces and stick them directly as they are, but I wanted to add some shadowing. And for all the shading, I am going to be using my new Distress Crayons and I'm going to show you how easy it is. So for each one of the cups, I have picked up a, a crayon that is uh, a couple of uh, shades darker than the actual color. And I'm going around it, applying just a little bit of paint, and then I am smudging it with my finger. Notice that I have a baby wipe close by, and uh, I think that it makes it super easy when uh, you have a slightly damp uh, finger. Now, Distress crayons are really smooth and uh, soft, and they are really easy to smudge. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on all of my caps. And I usually love doing some shading on the edges of my 
elements just because that helps them uh, become more dimensional. Now, if you are going for a bright and colorful project, then you can stick them uh, with the glue right on your project. But just because I am going for a vintage look, I decided to add just a little bit of vintage photo on the edges. Now, I'm applying it with my blending tool and I'm making sure that I don't darken them too much. I still want to see all that um, shading that I did with all those different colors. And as I am doing that, just to remind you that you can find the full list of all the supplies that I'm using today, as always, just below the video in the description area, as well as on my blog. So this is where you can go ahead and stick everything down, but I am first going to seal them down. All my pieces, I am going to cover them up with that uh, glue, which is actually matte medium, all over with my brass. And I am doing so because I have used Distress Ink and Distress Crayons on all of my cups, which react with water. And if I stick them directly on the canvas with the glue, then uh, all those colors that I have used will uh, smudge my canvas. I'm going to show you what I mean. I have uh, an example here. So I have uh, this uh, orange cup where I have used both Distress Ink and Distress Crayon and I am going to make as if I was sticking it on my canvas. So you can see that I have smudged my white paper there. So if I, if I did directly stick the cups on my canvas, I would have all those different colors like uh, orange and uh, red and blue and everything else directly on my canvas. And I didn't want to have such an effect. So now that everything is nicely sealed, I can go ahead and stick them down with the same glue. But you can see that as I apply the glue on top, it doesn't smudge at all. Now that I have placed my cups on my canvas, I am going to create all the different tiles that I am going to use to cover up the rest of the canvas. So I am cutting out strips of uh, paper. I am using this scrapbooking paper that is um, vintage looking and I am cutting out tiles. As you can see, I am doing everything totally random. I'm not measuring anything. I'm just cutting out uh, bigger and smaller little tiles. And I did cut way more than I needed, but that was good because I could uh, easily look for a piece that would match the gap that I had on my canvas. And I am planning to use this canvas to decorate my kitchen. So I am uh, going to use some of those letters by Tim Holtz and I am going to spell tea time. So I'm just trying to find everything there and uh, now I am going to cut some corners totally randomly just to make them look as broken tiles. I am going to place them on my canvas and then I am going to stick them down with my glue that was included in that uh, paper, paper mosaic kit. 
This uh, paper mosaic uh, project is really easy to recreate and you can uh, have uh, flowers or uh, any other designs that uh, you might think of as your focal point and just cover up the rest of the canvas with uh, small little pieces of paper. Now, uh, although it is uh, very easy, it's uh, kind of time consuming because you will see that it's going to take me time to stick all those little pieces and cover up the empty space. But um, I promise you it's very therapeutic and just because uh, this uh, is repetitive you don't have to think of anything just listen to your favorite music or watch tv while you are making it and i promise you it's going to be lots of fun the only thing that i'm making sure of is leaving enough white uh, gap between all those pieces that i'm sticking down and not sticking them close to each other because this is going to add to that uh, mosaic feel also notice how I use the glue. I use it to stick uh, my pieces down on the canvas, but also to seal them down, so I have covered up everything. You can also go ahead and add little tiles on the edges, but I decided not to. And um, this is where I decided that uh, that white gap was too white and bright for me. So you can uh, go ahead and use uh, your uh, distressing with uh, a dabber, or you can use this new product to darken things up. And this is a new medium by Tim Holtz and it's called Distress Collage Medium and that's uh, the vintage color which uh, actually is a uh, matte medium tinted. So you can apply it with uh, your brush and it instantly gives that uh, distressed and vintage look on your projects. I have zoomed in so you can see better what I'm doing and you can see that it uh, adds just a, a, a little transparent shading. It's not too much. And it's not too dark. But again, if you want your uh, project to be colorful and uh, bright, you don't need to use that. All those white caps with that beautiful texture from the grout are just perfect. I am applying my medium on the edges and now that the, everything is nicely dry I'm going to go ahead and use the glaze. So the glaze has this uh, nice fine tip on top which uh, is, uh, makes your life really easy when it comes to apply it on the tiles. So when I apply it I just squeeze a little bit and I go all around the edges and then fill in the inside. When you apply this glaze, it looks uh, kind of milky, but it is going to dry out totally clear and it's going to make uh, all those paper pieces look as if they were actually tiles. So this is where you have to be quite neat and uh, take your time. As you apply the glaze, if any bubbles appear, you can always pop them up with uh, a pin. Always remember to start from one side and move your way to the other so you don't mess things up as you go over the tiles with your hands. And once you have covered up everything, including the cups, you just need to leave that aside to dry. And a good idea is uh, to cover it up with a big box or something uh, that you can find so that uh, no dust or... Um, Cut hair goes on your project while it dries. So here it is finished. And I really, really love the effect. And it's also a great project to give as a gift to your friends. So that was the project for today. I hope you had fun and got inspired. And if you did, don't forget to leave me a comment as well as give me a thumbs up on my YouTube channel. Here are some close-up photos of the project. And if you need more inspiration, here are two art journal layouts using mixed media techniques that I did a while back. Thank you all for watching!